wanted to ask you how you first came to learn about these Southwest peaches. I started down a path of trying to identify what what career field I wanted to go into. Uh, once I decided that uh, my initial career program, which was actually a business school, was not the best fit for me, my I had a one-to-one -one talk with my father, and he said, "Why don't you go learn about agriculture? Bring back." A lot of the knowledge that uh, that is starting to die off in our communities, and one thing that he also brought up with that was the discussion of the peaches that our people had grown for hundreds of years. Yeah. So my dad, um, up until the age of eight, he grew up strictly on the reservation in Shanto, Arizona, and he remembered going into a lot of these areas with his grandfather and um, and his parents where they would go and they would harvest peaches during harvest time. How did you manage to find the last remaining trees? We uh, went into Navajo Mountain area into some of the most rural areas um, and the areas of these production systems are so remote that only the the most traditional elders continue to grow these crops and and continue to do agriculture in the traditional way. What was it like the first time you actually saw the trees? What was it like the first time you tasted the fruit? The feelings that I've had every time that we discover and find a place that has the original fruit that we knew we grew, I start to get um, overwhelmed. I, I have a lot of gratitude. Um, I'm, I'm often praying with a lot of thanks. Uh, to Heavenly Father saying, thank you for leading us here. Thank you for guiding us here. Um, because a lot of what I've been able to do, I know has been uh, with support from a higher power, not only from my family, but definitely a higher power. Um, it's definitely a, a, a purpose of my life to, to go forward and to preserve these trees. You got the seeds from the growers. They trusted you enough to give you the seeds. And it sounds like you planted them out in various orchards. Is that correct? What? How old are the trees now that you've planted? I I have one orchard that they're planted in. I've donated a few to Utah State University, um, so they're six, seven years old, and um, some of the later ones are a couple years younger than that. They are all in full production now at this point in their life, and um, and so the next thing that that we are doing is is assessing their fruit quality and. Um, so far, with, with the results of my thesis and the genetic analysis that we did, they are uniquely um, inbred within their own regions. I bet you you have people who are knocking on your door saying, I'll take some of those seeds, I'll plant them, and that's a good thing, because then we are going to save this particular type of, of um, plant. Why is that not a good idea? Um, it's a blessing to know that there's a lot of people that want to help, that want to grow this. Um, at this point in time, because there's very few, um, we're trying to protect what we have now. We're trying to protect the growers that are still growing them. A lot of them are still elderly. A lot of them continue to stay isolated. With time, we're hoping to get it to that point where we can have it in abundance in our communities again, have, have orchards. Um, spaces that are isolated from other peach cultivars so that way we make sure that they will always remain pure and isolated and we will always have that seed source available for not just our community but for those that do want to grow it. Uh, with these trees being so isolated we don't know what their disease resistance is. Um, we don't want to introduce something or make it come out in so much abundance that we would be encouraging pathogens to be able to start populating themselves within our local orchards or our historic orchards. So Katie says, what are the basic differences between the peach trees that Reagan is talking about and conventional peach trees bought at a garden store? So a lot of your conventional peach trees, um, when you get to, to the breeding background, these peaches are selected for their size. So you want a marketable size that's manageable in the industry um, that looks big. You want something with vibrant colors, right? So their peel has some red on it. 
Um, it's just got a really unique uh, full color of life that looks very appetizing, right? The next thing you want is when you actually taste the fruit, you want it to taste really good. You want the sweet, the sugars to be there so that way you get the mouthful of sugar. Um, sometimes the thought of having a really juicy peach is of interest. When it comes to the peaches that we have, we did not select them for that. Um, we, we selected our plants and allowed them to grow naturally to where now they are very adaptable in our climate. We don't have to uh, water them a lot. There's not a lot of uh, modern management practices that go into play with these trees as far as fertilizers and, and compost. Um, there's a few things traditionally that we talk about that we do um, but as far as things like pruning and uh, thinning blossoms, we don't do any of that. Um, the fruit itself is very small. Um, it's about the size of an apricot. The most common fruit that everybody talks about is that they're white flesh. They are free stone uh, peach. And the ones that I've tasted, especially the ones out of Canyon de Chez, is um, the peel is a little tart. Uh, the fruit is not a vibrant red. It has a little bit of a blush on the, the surface where the sun touches it, but on the underside, it's still uh, mostly green or yellow peel. So it's not very like visually appealing to eat, but when you taste it, the peel is tart and the flesh inside is what I've tasted is very sweet like a lot of our traditional foods, because we did not have a refrigeration system, is we dried all of our food source to store it throughout the winter to get us through until the next season or for years down the road. You have now, you're now pretty much devoting your life to protecting this beautiful tree. How are you going to do it? And what do you see its future is going to look like? I'm right now identifying several different partners and then also wanting to identify uh, growers, locally in the southwest area where I know these trees are going to thrive and become abundant to help preserve and provide these seeds back to the local communities that are in desperate need of growing them. Right now there's so many elders that I talk to or so many so many people and they come up to me and they say, Do you have the peaches? you know, and I and I tell them, Yes I do. I'll I'm trying to create a list of everybody that wants one and needs one. And, and one day I'll be able to say, here you go. I, I have enough now. And um, still protecting the elders that grow these and have their living off of these to not deplete their source, their life um, in asking and, and over asking, but being able to give back uh, with due process. Um, that these will become in abundance for, for our people and, and everyone in the area that, that need to grow them. Mm-hmm.